Well friends, earlier we saw what are the different types of gallbladder calculi. Now we will see what are CBD calculi or in a short these are the complications of gallbladder calculi. So we will see what is meant by cholecholithiasis. So whenever a stone from gallbladder migrates down across CBD, it is called as cholecholithiasis. So we have got two types of stones in common bile duct. First are the secondary. Secondary are more common and they are formed within gallbladder and they migrate down the cystic duct to the CBD. They are generally of cholesterol in nature. The formation of black pigment stones is associated with hemolytic disorders, cirrhosis, ileal resection, prolonged fasting and total parental nutrition. So in short, whenever you come across secondary type of CBD stones, they are of cholesterol and black pigment stones of which cholesterol stones are common. So you may be asked question which of the following stones form most common type of secondary CBD stones. So these are cholesterol stones. Then we will see what are primary stones. They are formed primarily in common bile duct. They are usually of brown pigment type. So mine there is difference. The black are common as secondary and brown are common as primary. They usually follow bile duct stasis and infection. Bacteria have been found in brown pigment stones by electron microscopy but not in black pigment stones. So brown pigment stones which are primary in CBD they are more seen association with the infection and bile stasis. So which of the following stones are common in bile stasis? So these are primary pigment stones or you may be given option brown pigment stones, black pigment stones and cholesterol stones. So you should pick up accordingly. Primary bile duct stones are more common in Asian population and these often are associated with primary intrahepatic stones in this population. So whenever the stones are formed in the common hepatic ducts, these are mainly primary bile duct stones. Now we will see the pathogenesis of intrahepatic stones. They are commonly seen after bile infection, bile stasis, low protein, low fat diets and malnutrition and parasitic infections. However, the role of Ascaris lumbricoides and Clonarchis sinensis in the formation of intrahepatic stones is controversial. So, except parasitic infection, all others have got definitive role in intrahepatic stones. Clinically, common bile duct stones may remain silent or they may cause intermittent abdominal pain with nausea and vomiting. Cholangitis may be present with pain fever jaundice or rigors may be present. They can cause pancreatitis if they migrate across the ampoule of water and cause obstruction at the sphincter pancreatitis or they may cause obstruction at the pancreatic sphincter in the CBD, they may cause pancreatitis. What are the laboratory findings? We have got serum bilirubin, serum gamma glutamyl transpeptidase, serum alkaline phosphatase, they may be mildly elevated along with raised HGOT and HGPT. If cholangitis, pancreatitis or associated with acute cholecystitis is present, white blood cell count will be increased. So whenever these patients have got complications like cholangitis, pancreatitis and associated acute cholecystitis, the white blood cell counts will be increased with marked increase in HGOT and HGPT. Elevated amylase and lipase may suggest pancreatitis. So whenever the patient comes to you with cholecholithiasis, you should rule out other associated complications like pancreatitis and cholangitis. How do you evaluate these patients? They are best evaluated with transcutaneous ultrasound. It is highly accurate in identifying acute calculus cholecystitis and the presence of gallstones greater than 2 mm. So here they may ask you questions. If the CBD has got stones of size of 2 mm and more, which is the most sensitive investigation? The presence of multiple small and variable gallbladder stones represented a risk factor for synchronous asymptomatic bile duct stones as compared with large stones. So here again, which of the following forms a major risk factor for asymptomatic CBD stones? So patient may be harboring stones in CBD but they may not know. So these are very small stones, multiple and small and variable size gallbladder stones, they form more risk factor as compared to the large stones.
ERCP is a second modality. So, along with the ability to diagnose bile duct stones, ERCP has the advantage of offering therapeutic intervention in the same setting. So, during ERCP, sphincterotomy entails division of papilla and sphincter muscles to widen the distal end of common bile duct with the use of sphincterotome. So, the length of intradunal part of common bile duct limits the extension of the cut. So, you may be asked question, which of the following will be limiting factor for extension of cutting of sphincter during ERCP. So, it is intradunal part of common bile duct, not the severity of infection, not the patient's coagulation factors or you may be asked any other combination. So, you should pick up the right choice that is intradunal part of common bile duct. Balloon sphincteroplasty is a sphincter preserving alternative to sphincterotomy that uses high pressure hydrostatic balloon of either 6 or 8 mm diameter to dilate the papilla. So, apart from sphincterotome, we have got balloon sphincteroplasty. Here you dilate the sphincter and you get the stones extracted. If the stones are not found, bile can be collected for microlithiasis. ERCP stone extraction is successful in 80 to 90 percent of the time by using the techniques of sphincterotomy and balloon catheter or dormia basket can be used for stone retrieval. So, dormia basket is the most commonly used for stone retrieval along, amongst all the available gadgets. In addition to dormia baskets, we have got mechanical or electrohydraulic or laser or extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy for larger stones. When you combine all these modalities, the success rate reaches up to 95% to extract these larger stones. Once the sphincter has been divided, most stones can be removed using dormia basket or balloon catheter. The dormia basket has better traction than balloon and consequently is recommended for larger stones of more than 1 cm size. So, if you are given the clinical scenario in which they mention the size of stones is around 1.5 cm, which of the following will be appropriate to extract the stones? It is dormia basket. The balloon catheter occludes the bile duct lumen after inflation and therefore useful in the removal of small stones and gravel. So, you should note the difference. The balloon catheter is for smaller stones and dormia basket for larger stones. The catheter can also be inserted over guide wire, making it useful for intrahepatic duct stones. There are three situations that may lead to difficulty in extraction. These are stones larger than 1.5 cm size, stones located proximal to a stricture. So, if there is stricture and stones are located proximal to it, it will be difficult to extract the stone across the stricture. So, across the stricture, you will have to instrumentation that is quite difficult. And if the multiple stones that are impacted in the CBD, so all the stones are impacted tightly in the CBD, you may find difficult to pass a guide wire across them and get the stones out. Alternative approaches to these situations include mechanical lithotripsy, electrohydraulic or laser lithotripsy and extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy. So, when you find difficult situations so the stones are larger in size, they may be crushed by external lithotripsy or mechanical lithotrit to pulverize them and they can be extracted. Sensitivities of con conventional computerized tomography or CT scan for cholelocolithiasis in the setting of suspected bile duct stones is 70 to 90 percent. Whereas, unenhanced helical CT scan has been shown to have sensitivity of 88 and specificity of 97 percent and accuracy of 94 percent. So, which of the following has got more sensitivity for stone detection? So, if you are given an option of unenhanced helical scan, so it is a type of CT scan only where you have got multiple rotations of the tube in the same setting. So, it has got more sensitivity as compared to conventional CT scan. So, do not confuse between computerized that is conventional CT scan and unenhanced helical CT scan. Nowadays, MRCP that is magnetic resonance cholangiopancreatography can be used for detection of small stones of less than 2 mm. So, stones as small as 2 mm can be detected even in absence of biliary dilatation. So, stones which are 2 mm and above, they are better detected by transabdominal ultrasound and stones smaller size of 2 mm can be detected by magnetic resonance cholangiopancreatography. With its ability to exclude bile duct stones, MRCP may allow the avoidance of unnecessary diagnostic ERCP. So, ERCP should not be done unnecessarily because it is an invasive procedure. You have to cut sphincter and it may cause trauma, perforation and its complications. One of the limitations of MRCP is that its resolution remains less than that of ERCP and therefore it cannot detect small stones and crystals consistently. 
gold standard for diagnosing intra biliary or that is CBD stones is ERCP. But MRCP can be used sometimes. But if you are asked specifically which of the following will form the gold standard for diagnosing the common bile duct stones, it is the ERCP. Nowadays, US that is endoscopic ultrasound has also come. US has shown to be have diagnostic accuracy of 95% for bile duct stones with the high ultrasound frequencies used like 7.5 and 12 megahertz the US has a resolution of less than 1 millimeter making the best imaging technique available for extrahepatic biliary duct. So here is the confusion that will still exist that is which is the best. So if you think of invasive ERCP is the best to detect smallest stones and if you think of non-invasive then EUS is the best but among these both are at par so examiner should not ask if you are asked a question which of the following is the best then EUS and ERCP if they are both quoted then you should go by old school of thought like ERCP. So EUS is similar to ERCP in sensitivity and specificity for the evaluation of colodocolithiasis. So both have got same rate of sensitivity. We can also use percutaneous transhepatic cholangiography that is called as PTC or intraoperative cholangiography that is intraoperative cholangiogram for detection of the CBD stones. So intraoperative cholangiogram is also sensitive. If you are doing a procedure and during the same sitting you can detect stones and you can take them out. Now how will you treat cholangiolithiasis? It is treated by open or laparoscopic duct exploration. It can be treated by ERCP or PTC that is we saw earlier. Transdural sphincteroplasty that is TDS is useful in the management of cholodocolithiasis when there is a stone impacted at ampoule of water along with papillary stenosis or the, there are multiple stones which are present. So they are of useful in presence of non-dilated bile duct. So if you are given the clinical scenario, the patient has got non-dilated bile duct, then transdural sphincterotomy is also important. Next we have got cholidocoduodenostomy. Cholidocoduodenostomy is indicated in patients with recurrent stones requiring repeated interventions, impacted or giant stones, biliary sludge and ampullary stenosis. So again this may form a very good question. So if you are given a clinical scenario where the patient presents to you with repeated CBD stones then dilatation of the CBD which is of around 1.2 and above size then which of the following will form the better option you may be given ERCP stenting and various other options like CBD exploration and closure and cholidocodiodonostomy uh, so cholidocodiodonostomy will form a better option cholidocodiodonostomy can also be done whenever you have got stricture at the lower end of CBD or where the cholidocodiodonostomy is not feasible and whenever you find that there is likelihood of complications of cholidocodionostomy like the stasis in the distal part of CBD which is left there or there may be formation of recurrent stones because of stasis across the distal part of CBD which is left. So in these situations cholidocodionostomy that is RUNY cholidocodionostomy can also be used. So friends we saw today what are various types of cholidocolithiasis, how to diagnose them, which are the better modalities for diagnosing and investigating multiple CBD stones and we saw the various treatment options like ERCP and open and laparoscopic management of cholidocolithiasis. Thank you.